I've pretty much just been leaving a breadcrumb trail of gayness. I see that now. We love their music. We love their lyrics. And sometimes we get to love them on the big screen too. Oh. 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 Welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 funniest musician cameos in movies. You know we sell this. I don't know if you knew that. It's too bad, man. I just stopped smoking yesterday. For this list, we're looking at well-known musicians who had brief appearances in a film whether they're playing themselves or a fictional character. Also, some of these cameos come at the end of the movie, so a spoiler alert is in order. On a journey you must go to find the land of Hollywood. Number 10, Michael Jackson, Men in Black 2. How'd it go? Zed, the door locks are gone and the treaty is signed. The late great King of Pop had starred in his fair share of movies, but most of these were about himself and his music. What about that position you promised me in Men in Black? So when MJ shows up as a representative of a Men in Black sister organization to ask Chief Zed if he can be Agent M, we can't help but be amused at his random appearance in the franchise. You're, you're breaking up. Zed? Can't hear you. Hello? I'll call you back. I can be Agent M. If you look closely during Zed's funeral in Men in Black 3, which was released three years after the King of Pop's death, a tombstone with the letter M can be seen. So perhaps the pop icon got his wish after all. Zed, is that you? I can be Agent M. Number 9. Jack White, Walk Hard, The Dewey Cox Story. Dang it, Elvis Presley, you didn't have to rile him up like that. <laughs> what now? No, excuse me, what? Since the film follows character Dewey Cox, who is mostly based on Johnny Cash and centers on the music industry, it isn't surprising that a few real artists would pop up. Well, sometimes you have to go all out when you're the king and you can't help it, you know? Jewel appears as herself, as do Eddie Vedder and The Temptations. <laughs> the Temptations! But the crowning jewel of all the cameos is Jack White former lead singer of the White Stripes and a successful solo artist who plays the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley. One night, God looked down all the millions and millions and millions of people, man, and he decided which one was the best, and it was me. Even though we're pretty sure the real Elvis didn't think of himself as a gift from God or brag about his karate skills to other musicians, Jack White kind of makes us wish he had. Look out, man, look at that to come at you, you see that? It's called karate, man, and only two kinds of people know it. The Chinese and the king. One of them is me. Number 8. Alanis Morissette, Dogma. Bow down, stupid! Alanis Morissette is God. No, really. The fourth film in the Viewisk universe featuring the world's favorite stoners Jay and Silent Bob has Alanis portraying God at the end of the movie after she's released from her imprisonment in the body of a mortal homeless man. Where was she? Imprisoned in a body. Though her role is almost entirely silent, when she does choose to speak, it's to let out a piercing shriek that causes a destructive fallen angel's head to explode. This is a unique portrayal of God, which is only fitting for such a unique film about religion. It never ends. Number seven, Dave Grohl, Tenacious D, in The Pick of Destiny. Where is that? Tenacious D, the real-life comedy rock duo after which the movie was named, was formed by actors, musicians, and funny men Jack Black and Kyle Gass. The movie follows the two as they search for a magical guitar pick, but it falls into the hands of its original owner, the devil himself, played by, you guessed it, the uber-talented Dave Grohl. I am complete. When not playing Satan, Grohl acts as the frontman of the Foo Fighters and occasionally backs up a multitude of other artists on the drums. Even under the head-to-toe red body paint, there's no mistaking Grohl's killer vocals. The demon cold prevents me from declining a rock off challenge. Number six. Snoop Dogg, Half Baked. What's up, dogs? Good off. Let me get in here, man. What y'all doing? Cortazar Calvin Brodus Jr., also known as Snoop Dogg, also known as Snoop Lion, has made it no secret that he's a fan of marijuana. We almost expect the rapper to show up in every stoner flick if only to bum a smoke. Let me hear something. All right, man, this boy hit you. Scavenger. Which is, of course, what he does in this comedy film that stars Dave Chappelle and Jim Brewer, where he appears as the scavenger smoker. I ain't even hit the motherfucker yet. Back up. 
Snoop is known for his popular music and his numerous run-ins with the law. But what his media appearances keep reminding us of is that he really is quite funny. I'm gonna get up out of here, man. Y'all stay up, man. Nice seeing y'all. Yeah. Number five, Alice Cooper, Wayne's World. Have you ever built someone up in your head and then been disappointed when you finally met them? That might be how Wayne and Garth feel when they go backstage after an Alice Cooper concert to meet the man himself. Alice, is this cool? Yeah, come on in. The two oddball public access hosts expect the rock star to be hosting a massive rager in his dressing room, but instead he just gives them a history lesson on the city of Milwaukee. Isn't Milwaukee an Indian name? Yes, Pete, it is. Actually, it's pronounced Milwaukee which is Algonquin for the good land. The duo bow to him, confused. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! We're not worthy! We're, We're not stuck! Worthy. We suck! Number four, John Mayer, Get Hard. Well, actually, there's one more part to your present. It's Mr. John Mayer! John Mayer! With the voice of an angel, you don't expect sweet old John Mayer to whisper the things he does to Will Ferrell's character James when he performs at his party. You ever see a hundred women get wet at the same time? Watch this. <laughs> That's what makes the scene comedy gold. In the minute he's known him, Mayer reveals that he loves money and that he'll pretty much sleep with anyone. There's nothing I love more than making money. <laughs> Not even chicks or dudes. <laughs> After Farrell's character is arrested, John Mayer appears on The Jimmy Fallon Show to express how disgusted he is by him, and even shares a song he wrote about James being raped in prison. Hands against the prison wall, choking on a mouthful of balls. It's available for sale on iTunes, of course. I hate to admit it, but it's a good song. Number three, Billy Idol, the wedding singer. No way. In one of Adam Sandler's most iconic roles, he plays a wedding singer who falls in love with a woman named Julia, who is engaged to another man. At the film's conclusion, Sandler ends up flying first class and telling his love story to his fellow passengers, including punk rocker Billy Idol, who is very invested in the romance. Glenn doesn't deserve her. All he cares about possessions, fancy cars, CD players. When Sandler finds out that Julia and her fiance Glenn are on the same flight, Billy is quick to help him serenade her and send Glenn packing. One of our first class passengers would like to sing you a song inspired by one of our coach passengers. If this movie teaches us anything, it's that Billy Idol makes a great wingman. How you doing, sir? Chicken or fish? You better get out of my way, Billy. You're gonna get hurt. Oh yeah. Don't you talk to Billy Idol that way. <laughs> Number two. Eminem, funny people. I don't think you should have took that medicine. Why not? Whenever Eminem shows up on the big screen, he never disappoints. Honestly, man, what, what are you gonna do now? Make another bullshit movie? F another chick who doesn't like you? Funny People sees Eminem appear as himself to give Adam Sandler some not so helpful advice and to tell off Ray Romano. Hey, Ray! Hello, Marshall. F***ing problem here, buddy? W would you like to f*** me? Is that what this is? The rapper would make an equally uproarious cameo a few years later in the interview, where he drops a bombshell about his sexual orientation. When I say things about gay people, or people think that my lyrics are homophobic, mm -hmm. you know, it's because I'm gay. Since a lot of Eminem's music is serious and about darker times in the rapper's life, it's nice to see him take a step back and laugh at himself. Can't go to f***ing Chuck E. Cheese. I can't go to Target. I can't go to Best Buy. I can't go to f***ing Walmart, Kmart. You f***ing name it, I can't go there. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Jesus Christ. Number one. David Bowie, Zoolander. All right, who's gonna call this sucker? In the film's walk-off scene, Derek Zoolander and Hansel compete against each other in a battle of wits. Just kidding, they walk down a runway and pose. But the real highlight of the scene is David Bowie's unexpected cameo as the judge of said walk-off. I believe I might be of service. 
The space oddity singer manages to keep a straight face while pretending to take notes on the palm of his hand and smiles and gasps in all the right places. We believe that he's actually invested in the outcome of this absurd competition. First model walks, second model duplicates, then elaborates. Okay, boys, let's go to work. While the Beebs cameo in Zoolander 2 was great. Oh, fudge! Peace out, world. He's no Ziggy Stardust. Disqualified. Do you agree with our list? Billy Idol gets it. I don't know why she doesn't get it. What's your favorite musician cameo? Would you like me to fucking bend over for you right now? No. No, man. For more hilarious top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. <laughs> now I'm gonna be dreaming about balls.